Hello friends, welcome to a Thanksgiving week edition of Bronco Sports Weekly. I'm Sean Fagan. Let's get back to what happened last week. Well, men's basketball tied last season's longest win streak in just the second week of the season, going 4-0 against a variety of opponents last week. The Broncos opened the week with an 85-40 drubbing of Mary Grove at University Arena on Tuesday, and then it was off to the USF Invitational hosted by South Florida. The Broncos picked up three wins in as many days at the tournament, defeating Loyola Chicago on Friday, Maryland Eastern Shore on Saturday, and the hosting South Florida Bulls on Sunday. Nate Hutchison and Darius Paul were each named to the all-tournament team, and Hutchison later found out that he was named the Mac West Player of the Week. His big night came on Friday, 30 points against the Loyola Ramblers. The volleyball team reached the semifinals of the MAC tournament this weekend, winning their opening round match against Central Michigan before losing a heartbreaker to eventual champion Bowling Green in five sets. The Broncos got their revenge for last year's loss to the Chippewas, dropping them 3-1 thanks to a top-flight offensive effort. The Broncos hit 3-0-9 against the Chips, with Ali Gosen, Jessica Brown, and Carly Berland each recording double-digit kills in the win. Brown would record 22 kills against the Falcons on Saturday, making her just the second player in program history with 1,500 career kills. Congratulations, Jessica. Hockey made what was easily their longest road trip of the year, splitting a pair of games with Alaska in Fairbanks. The Broncos stumbled 6-1 on Friday night against the Nanooks, but came back from a 2-0 deficit on Saturday to win 3-2. The Nanooks had the most dangerous lead in hockey, a two-goal lead in the third period, and Garrett Haar got the train rolling with a goal just three and a half minutes in to cut it to one. Less than a minute later, Shane Birschbach added a goal to tie the score, and Mike Sicci scored the game winner for the Broncos with under three minutes remaining. Football set forth a valiant effort on Saturday on Senior Day, but the Broncos were unable to find victory against the Eastern Michigan Eagles, falling 29 to 23. Blake Hammond and Justin Collins each caught touchdown passes in the second quarter to pull the Broncos to within 17-14, and kicker Andrew Haldeman booted a field goal at the beginning of the third quarter to tie the score but the Eagles added 10 more points in the third quarter to seal the victory. Women's hoops fell in a pair of contests last week, just narrowly losing at Milwaukee and at home against Albany. Arielle Anderson had 26 points for the Broncos against the Panthers on Wednesday, and Michelle O'Brien and Miracle Woods each recorded double-doubles against the Panthers, but they pulled away late for the victory. Corey Buchanan added 10 points in the loss to the Great Danes on Sunday. And now let's take a look at some of the highlights from this past weekend. Men's basketball team taking on the Mary Grove Mustangs on Tuesday in the 2012-13 home opener. And for many of our Bronco fans, it was the first chance to see some of the new freshmen in action. How about Darius Paul with the steal, finds Austin Ritchie on the fast break. He lays it in as the Broncos laid it on the Mustangs in the first half. Here's a freshman to freshman connection. A.J. Avery taking the pass from Charles Harris. He knocks down the long jumper. Well, how about at the point guard position? Jared Klein coming in, steps up, fires. The Broncos would lead 35 to 23 at the end of the first half. In the second, they would really pile it on. Charles Harris, fast break jam. The Broncos would outscore the Mustangs 50 to 17 in the second half, and Western Michigan would defeat Mary Grove 85 to 40. The football team played its final game of the 2012 season, taking on the Eastern Michigan Eagles on Senior Day. Senior quarterback Alex Carter decided he was going to try to make it a day to remember, connecting with a number of targets in the first half. There's Darion Chance taking one across the middle. Carter would connect again with Jamie Wilson as the Broncos had the all-out air assault, but they fell behind early. The defense would stand tall, though, in the second quarter, stuffing the Eagles, and Carter would put the Broncos on the board. Steps back to throw, finds Justin Collins. He's really turned it on at the end of the year. He catches the touchdown. The Broncos would cut the lead to 17-14, entering halftime. However, they would lose the game by a final score of 29-23. The women's basketball team taking on the Albany Great Danes, the 2011-12 America East champions, and they would stick it to the Great Danes in the first half. Julia Henson hits the three from the left side, followed by Julia Henson hitting the three from the left side. How about one more time for good measure? Julia Henson with three three-pointers in a row as the Broncos took the lead on the Great Danes in the first half. Corey Buchanan would be the leading scorer for the Broncos in this game, though. Driving to the hoop, she would finish with 10 points the Great Danes would start to pull away in the second half, however, and Albany ends up defeating the Broncos 68-54 at University Arena. 
All right, folks, let's take a look for what we will be watching for this weekend. Not a whole lot of Bronco athletics in action this weekend. Just two teams will be competing, but let's take a look. Women's basketball will compete at the Northern Arizona Thanksgiving Tournament this weekend, opening the proceedings with a Friday game against the hosting Lumberjacks. Tip-off is scheduled for 4.05 p.m. in that contest. The Broncos will go on to face either Tulane or Bradley on Saturday. That tip-off time yet to be determined. And the volleyball team will honor senior Jessica Brown on Friday in what will be the final match of the year for the Broncos when they face the 13th-ranked Dayton Flyers at University Arena. There have been a multitude of great players to come through the Broncos' ranks over the years, and Brown's numbers stack up with all of them. She will retire as second on the Broncos' career kills list and a four-time All-Mac honoree, including three straight years on the first team. And that's going to do it for us this weekend on Broncos Sports Weekly. I'm Sean Fagan saying join us again next week, same Bronco time, same Bronco place.